Next up is an algorithm that has many different names. It's called cocktail sort or cocktail shaker sort. Some call it ripple sort, others call it shuttle sort. And then there's also another name called bidirectional bubble sort. And it is this last name that summarizes what this algorithm is all about. The algorithm works just like bubble sort, but it's going back and forth in both directions. This means that just like bubble sort, cocktail shaker starts by floating array elements to the right hand side of the array. The key difference to plain vanilla bubble sort now is what happens after the tallest bar has reached its correct position at the right hand side of the array. Now, instead of starting over at the very left of the array, cocktail sword now starts at the very right hand side of the array and moves back the other way. So instead of floating up large array elements to the right hand side of the array, it now moves down small array elements to the far left of the array. Once the smallest element has been moved to the very left of the array, the algorithm then again turns around. Now it goes upwards again. It then repeats this pattern of first moving large elements to the right and then small elements to the left until the entire array is sorted. Performance-wise, the algorithm does a little better than bubble sort, but cocktail shaker sort is still far from being a powerful sorting tool. Nonetheless, the algorithm makes for a cool visual effect, especially if you use different colors, which is what we're doing here in this animation. Okay, so how does cocktail sort work in detail? Let's have a look at our unsorted array. This is the same one we have been using before in the other numerical examples, two, five, four, one, and three. Now we begin exactly the same as we did with bubble sort. We have a forward pass. So we are now comparing two and five. We compare these two, five is greater than two. This is how it is supposed to be. So no swap is necessary here. The array still reads two, five, four, one, and three. Now we are comparing five and four. That is the second and the third array element. And we see that five is greater than four, but currently it comes before it. So here we have to make a swap. We swap these two array elements and now it reads two, four, five, one, three. Now we compare five and one. Again, we have to make a swap. The array now reads two, four, one, five, three. Final swap, the five has now moved to the top. Two, four, one, three, five. The five has now floated all the way to the right hand side of the array. Now bubble sort until this point was exactly the same, but now bubble sort would start over all the way at the left. But now we'll do things a little different because we are now introducing the backward pass. Now when we are doing the backward pass in cocktail sort, we don't have to have another look at this five because we already know it's in the correct position. So we are not starting the backward pass all the way to the right. Instead, we are starting with the penultimate and the element, uh, the penultimate element and the element preceding it. So we are having a look at this one and this three here, and we see that one is less than three, so we do not have, do not have to make a swap here. We have the same array, two, four, one, three, five, and now we are comparing four and one, and here we are seeing that four is less, is greater than one, but coming before it, so we've got to make a swap here. So we will make this swap. The array now reads two, one, four, three, and five, we are now comparing two and one. Again, a swap is necessary. And the array now reads one, two, four, three, and five. And we can now see that in this backward pass, we move this one here all the way to the left. So it was kind of an inverse of what we do with the forward pass, where we moved the largest element all the way to the right. We now moved the smallest element all the way to the left. Now, cocktail sword will repeat this, this or the, the same thing really. It's now doing another forward pass. This time, however, we are not starting with the first array element because we already know that it, that it is sorted. So if I go back up here, the first forward pass started with the first element. Now, this, um, this second forward pass here will not have a look at this one because it's already in place. So we're comparing two and four, 
no swap is necessary. We are now comparing four and three. Here, four is greater than three, but it's currently coming first. So we have to swap this. And the arena reads one, two, three, four, five. Now we'll make one final backward pass. So we're now look, we, we could stop this here, but for the sake of completeness, I'm just gonna walk you through this last backward pass. The previous backward pass started with this element here, the second to last element. So we are now going or oh, starting one element before that. So we're comparing three and two. And here we see that no swap is necessary. So yes, this is now the, um, the final configuration of the array. The sorting process is done. We have found the correct solution. Okay, so let's code this. As before, we'll define a new method, which we'll call cocktail sort. We'll have one parameter, one argument, which is the array itself. We'll define our local variable n, which is the size of the array. You've seen this in other videos before. We'll define a boolean, which is indicate or which indicates whether or not the array is sorted. We will call it is sorted, and we'll set it false because at first the array is not sorted. Now we'll have a while loop. While not is sorted, we'll be doing two things. We'll have the forward pass and then later on we'll also have a backward pass. Now each of these passes will go through the array, will traverse the array and compare adjacent elements. But as I said before, um, at first we're looping until the very end of the array, but then when we're doing the backward pass, we don't have to look at that last element because it's already sorted. And when we are going into the second forward pass, we will not have to look at the very first element of the array because we already know, already know that this element is already sorted. So we kind of have to keep track of the start and the end of the unsorted section of the array. And this is why we'll define two additional variables here, start and end. And we'll set this, set these two variables to zero and n minus one. So start will be where the forward pass first forward pass will start. So we'll say for i in range start, and we want this to start at zero, right? So at first it's zero, but then it's going to be greater and greater with each iteration of the um, while loop. And then it's going to go all the way until end. And now you're saying, well, this is not the exact end, it's n minus one. And this is um, this is right of this. I mean, you're perfectly right in noticing this, but we are using n minus one here because we are comparing the ith element, the ith element of the array with the um, i plus one, the i plus first. Do you say this i plus first element? No, uh, we are comparing element i with element i plus one. Okay, and these are the two elements we are comparing. I'm not going to be typing the um, swap command right here because we first have to compare this, these two. So if this element i is greater than i plus one. This is when we have to make the swap. Then we're going to use this comma here and a i plus one, and we'll swap these. So I'm going to just type these out once more in reverse order, a i. Okay, there we go. So this is the forward pass, and we, whenever we have to swap two elements, whenever we swap two elements, we'll set the boolean, the is sorted boolean, We'll set this back to false. Now you might say, well, why are you setting it back to false? It was false to begin with. You're perfectly right in observing this. So let's set this to true before we'll start the forward pass. And now once we've made a swap, we'll set it back to false. Um, before we go into the backward pass, we can have a quick check, um, check if done. Because if this Boolean has remained true throughout this entire loop, then we are done with the sorting process. So if sorted, if is sorted, um, well, we can just break out of the while loop because we are done. Um, well, let's introduce the backward pass. Um, we can just copy most of this actually. So I'm just gonna copy this down here. There is two things we need to change. The first thing that we have to make sure of is we have to make the loop go backwards. So we'll change this such that it reads and start, and then we'll have to change the increment parameter here. 
which is by default equal to one. So we don't have to specify anything up here, but now we have to set it to minus one for the array to go for the array to be traversed backwards. And because of the way that we are looking at i and i plus one, we'll also have to set this to end minus one and start minus one. This is really because we are comparing i and i plus one. We could change this to minus here as well, then we wouldn't have to bother with this, but I'm just lazy here. So I'm just changing this to minus one, minus one here, and I'm leaving everything else as it was up here. Okay, and the last thing that's necessary before we can run this is we are not updating start and end at this, I mean, so far. So it's always zero and n minus one. So after every forward pass and after every backward pass, we have to update these. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to put it before the check just because I, I think it's, it looks better. But you can also put it after the check because, I mean, we don't have to update the end variable when the array is already sorted, but I just think it looks better and it's more easy for us to understand when we look at this code later on. So I'm just going to put it here, but you can you can put it after the check if you want to. So update end, so end minus equal one. We don't have to traverse the array all the way to the right anymore because we have already completed the first forward pass at this point here. And then down here, we'll update the start variable. So we'll say start. Now we have to add one and not subtract one because, well, the start is at the left of the array. And this should be it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the array should now be sorted when we apply this command. So let's see whether this works. A is equal to, to this array from the example above. We're going to print A. And now we're going to cocktail sort A and print it once more. And there we go. First, the array reads 25413, and now it reads 12345. But before we can visualize anything, we'll have to add the yield statements. Now, where do we do that? Well, every time we made a swap, then we can yield something that's new. So let's say yield A. And then we'll have to highlight the i plus, well, the element i plus one, because this is after the swap. Okay, so if we want to highlight element i after the swap, we have to highlight element i plus one. And then we'll just not use any further highlights at this stage, because we'll have to see whether this works first. So I'm going to save this. This is now a new script called cocktail.py. And in the main script, I'm importing this by typing from cocktail import cocktail sort. And now I'm going to visualize this new algorithm with n equal to 100 observations, or not observations, but array elements. So let's see whether this works. So I'm running this, and here it is. We can now see the bubble is going from left to right. Now let's see whether it will go the other way back down as soon as it reaches the right hand side. And there we go. We can now see that it's going back and here we're not highlighting the correct element because you can see how the bubble, the red bar is changing in size. I mean, it should change in size, but it should not become larger at any point. So the upward traversal, the forward pass appears to be working correctly, but the backward pass, the downward traversal is not working because you can see how it goes up and down and this is not what you want. So I'm just going to cancel this here. And now I'm going to go back into our cocktail script. And I think the reason for this is because when we're going backwards, we don't want this to be I plus one, but just I. So let's change this and save the change. And then maybe I'm just going to set this to 50. This is more than enough. And let's see whether this did the trick. And there we go. Now it's just this super tiny small bar, which is now moving all the way to the left. And now let's see whether this works. Yes. So yeah, this is it. We have just implemented cocktail sort. There's just one thing left to do, and that is highlighting the sections of the array that have already been sorted. So I'm just going to cancel this build here as well. And I'm going to go back over here. And yeah, what is it that we want to highlight? We are going to highlight a range. So we're going to need the list and range commands here. And we are highlighting everything from zero all the way until start. 
and then we're going to highlight another range from end plus one until the last element in the array. So I'm going to copy this down here. And I think this is it. So let's head back over to the main and run this once more. We're seeing the first pass here. There's nothing highlighted yet, but now this section of the array is now green. And now we should see a, another bar over here, which is yellow. Now this is growing this green section here and so is the yellow section over here. And yeah, that's it. We have now implemented cocktail sort. In the next video, we'll have kind of a short interlude. We're not going to have a look at another sorting algorithm just yet, but in the next video, we'll finally make the transition from matplotlib to pygame. So right now you've noticed that I've always been using this animation here, but in the intro sections of the videos, you saw this other animation with the black background and an animation that ran a lot smoother. And there was also another very important feature Every time that I run this and I want to close it, and I whenever I close this window, it pops right back up. And this is kind of annoying because you always have to force your your editor here, your your computer to force I uh, like to 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 force quit the build. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just close this window and it would stop automatically? You could do this with matplotlib. It has some animation capabilities. We're not really using them here, but Pygame is a lot more powerful anyway, so I'll see you in the next video where we will introduce a new way of visualizing things in Pygame. See you then.